All right, pre-calculus, here we are with another series of videos on functions. This time we're looking at function notations, function operations, composition of functions. And in this video, specifically, we're going to look at the function operations and their notations. So much like with numbers, we can do the same thing with functions. We can add them together, we can subtract them, multiply, divide, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off here with two sample functions. So I'm going to have f of x is equal to x squared plus 3. And g of x is equal to 2x plus 1. So there are a few ways to write the notation for combining together functions. So I'm going to put that here. So I have for my first notation... I'm going to go ahead and put down, let me change the pen color here. So I'm going to go ahead and write down our first function. We're going to add these two together. So f of x plus g of x. So this is our just common way of writing that we want to add up the two functions. Now another way that it could be notated is by writing f plus g. So it's just literally I'm adding the two functions. Not two variables, but the two functions. Now the third way, which is the way that most people kind of find it confusing, is the following notation, which is f plus g of x. So some people look at this and would think it says, oh, f plus g times x. But no, it's really saying we're going to add up the two functions, f and g, and the variable is x. So all three of these are equivalent expressions. So we may see any of these, but they all mean exactly the same thing, which is to add up the functions. And the same notation will happen for all the other operations, whether we're adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. All of those will have the same setup. It's all three of these. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go um, and do some examples of adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing with these two functions. So I'm starting off with our addition. And I'm going to use that harder notation at the bottom just so we get accustomed to seeing it. So f plus g of x. So I have x squared plus 3 plus 2x plus 1. Now, a good habit to get into is to wrap your substitutions in parentheses. So you see how I wrap that f of x in parentheses? And then I wrap the g of x in parentheses. So we want to make sure that we just get into the habit of doing that so that I know I'm adding the two functions. I'm not adding individual terms in the function. I'm adding the whole function. So now we'll just go ahead and collect like terms. So we're going to say equals, and now we're going to add. So we have x squared plus 2x, and then we have our common terms of 3 and 1, which together becomes 4. So there we go. That's it. That's f plus g of x. Now let's go ahead and look at f minus g of x. So f minus g of x. And then now here's where, if you're getting into good habits, we are subtracting the whole function. So again, I'm wrapping my functions with a parentheses. So x squared minus 3 minus 2x plus 1. So I'm subtracting the whole function, which will mean I'm going to go ahead and distribute. So a common mistake would be if I don't put that parentheses like I do now, you see I would be making that cardinal mistake of, oh, I subtract the 2x, but not the 1. So I'm going to put the parentheses back, and now we'll go ahead and carry out the subtraction. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute the negative. So x squared plus 3 minus 2x minus 1. And now I collect like terms so that I am going to get the correct response for this. So x squared minus 2x and 3 minus 1 would give me a plus 2. And there we go. We have our subtracting of the two functions. All right. Now we'll move into multiplying. So f times g of x. So again, I'm multiplying between these two. Now, I put the little dot here. Another way we could see this, and remember that in multiplying, sometimes you don't have to put the dot. 
It's just the two variables next to each other. So sometimes you might see that. That's not a goof. That just means we're multiplying just like over here with the little dot. Okay, so just to kind of make you aware what it is that they're trying to do. Sometimes they'll use a dot, sometimes they will not. So, but both are meaning the same thing. All right, so now we're going to multiply. So x squared plus 3 times 2x plus 1. Okay, now I'm going to multiply these together. So another review of algebra. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the box method here. So if you don't remember how to do this from Algebra 2, or maybe you never did it this way, you did it using the FOIL method. Either way, will give you the same answer. But I'll go ahead and I'll show you the box method here, which works for any two polynomials. So I'll start with x squared and 3, and then 2x and plus 1. So now I just multiply what's on the sides of the boxes together. So x squared times the 2x so x squared times the 2x, that's going to become 2x cubed. Then I have x squared times 1 is x squared. 3 times 2x is 6x. And finally, 3 times 1 is 3. So now I just add up all the stuff in the boxes. So let me change the pen color here. So now we got 2x cubed plus x squared plus 6x plus 3. And that is my answer for this multiplication. Now the last part, which actually ends up being the easiest operation, is this division problem. So f divided by g of x. So again, I'm going to wrap the functions in parentheses because I'm dividing by all of g of x. So x squared plus 3 divided by all of g of x, which is going to be that 2x plus 1. So 2x plus 1, and I put those parentheses there. Now this is the easiest one because nothing will reduce. I can't factor the polynomial at the top and nothing will cancel with the one on the bottom. Now a common mistake here in, in trying to simplify would be to try to cancel away the x's. And that can't happen. I cannot cancel away individual terms. So I cannot even look at, oh, the 3 divided by the 1 or the x squared divided by the 2x. So no, that cannot happen because they are adding together, they're cuffed together, so therefore they cannot be simplified. So this would be it, this would be my final answer. So now this is our review of function notations and operations.